Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Tracker, a coin sized tracking device that pairs with your smartphone and keeps you from losing your most valued possessions. Visit thetracker.com slash AAA to save 20% off any order. And by WordPress, your customers want to find you. Build a WordPress.com website and help them connect with your business. Get 15% off any new plan purchase at WordPress.com slash All About Android. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android. This is episode 338 recorded on Tuesday, October 10th. 2017, where your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. There we go. Yes. Excellent. We got there. How's it going, y'all? Good. You held good. down the back. fort. Thank you. <coughs> Welcome back. Week. Thanks. Did you have a good time. Had good a trip. great time. Um, right. Went deep into the woods, deep into the redwoods, so deep that I got absolutely zero connectivity, and I, which I was afraid of at first. But then I realized. It's a really great thing to it do. It is. It's wonderful. It's, it's quite awesome. Great. It's awesome to get over that fear and just disconnect for a while. Yes. Uh, but you can't help but feel like the world is crumbling around you. Because it it is, well, it's, <laughs> it's it being incinerated is. currently. Yeah, things are a little messed up Just here. Say hi to our guest first. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, yeah, no, but Teo Doni, of course, frequent visitor to All About Android and especially to the table because you guys are traveling through again. It's awesome to have you back. Thank you for having me back on the show. Always, man. Uh, CoolSmartphone.com, at Total Leo on Twitter. And uh, yeah, I mean, you, you picked quite a time to come mm -hmm. to the Sonoma area because so much of the area if you haven't heard the news is on fire right now basically there's multiple fires spreading throughout the region it is it's a very sad thing um we were inconvenienced uh, but it's nothing compared to what people are going through at the yeah. moment in the Santa oh, yeah. Rosa, yeah. uh sonoma area it's it's very very sad to see yeah it's intense there's ash everywhere if you go if you see the sun rise in the morning mm -hmm. it's not a normal sun it's like through this you know many many layers of ash and I it's like have to burning wear red here and i usually do because there's yeah. so much haze in the air that yeah, it's, it's crazy. like just this overhang um lots of blackened hills too Lo yeah i have not seen those firsthand you drove through them yeah, so yeah, you, yeah. you saw those yeah. um i've just been super amazed not surprised necessarily but amazed and happy about where where i live here in petaluma mm -hmm. cuz petaluma has basically been the place where a lot of people have escaped the fires yeah. and uh you know s sought shelter here and the entire town the entire city here has really just pitched in. Everybody's, you know, figuring out how they can help, what they can yeah. contribute, uh, if they can offer their time or assistance at uh, many of the shelters that are happening right now. Uh, so it's just really kind of heartening to see that. It is. I saw a lot of uh, I saw a lot of shelters in place on the way here. So yeah. A lot of like volunteer trucks and things of the sort. So it's really heartening to see. But of course. Uh, the big, the big stuff is going to come after the fires have all been fought. Oh man. Everybody yep. needs to rebuild. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, very much in our minds, but we've mm -hmm. got Android stuff to talk about. Um, we're going to be discussing, oh, just this little thing that happened next last week. Oh my God. Was it really just last week? Yes. In fact, it was almost like a full been, week ago. I feel like it's point. been months ago. <laughs> there was so much stuff that happened last week. Google had its event. Uh, so it announced a whole bunch of hardware. We're going to talk about all of that. Some of it you've heard about in leaks. Some of it amazingly didn't get <laughs> leaked. I was really surprised. There were some things that slid through there. Didn't expect that. Also, uh, Mateo's here. So we're going to have a little Mateo's hardware shack. Mm -hmm. Brought the Xiaomi Mi 6. Got the Do Doogie. 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 I always mess it Pronunciation up. Pronunciation is still... To be, to be discovered. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Duji BL7000 and more. 7,000. Yeah. We've, we've, <laughs> we've, Whoa, we've yeah. had 6,999 yeah. of these Duji BLs. <laughs> it's time for the next one. That's how they do it, right? I think so. It's either that or it's the battery capacity. We'll need to find out. Oh. 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 <laughs> that would make sense That's a as well. big battery. Before we get into the big news... Last week's big news. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, my favorite time. All right. This is a little different. Mateo, you are, are in charge this week. 
Am I in charge? Well, I, I you're, you're... We have to explain. You're responsible. <laughs> okay, I'm responsible, yes. So I brought something that is Oreo, but not actual Oreo cookies okay. from the UK. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. So this is a Cadbury chocolate bar with Oreo through it. What is uh, uh, what is that symbol? What is that? That is the pound sterling. <laughs> soon no, to be a, a parity of the US dollar. Oh, that's, oh, a, yeah, hashtag that's a hashtag, one. right? That's <laughs> hashtag one. Um, now, while you're opening it, I will tell you guys that every time I'm in the UK, I run to the news agent to get Cadbury chocolate because it is so much better than the stuff that our country sells. Uh, so you're in for a treat here, I think. All right. So how about... Oh, Although I like the international flavor, oh, okay. I don't know if this counts as Oreos, though. But it's got Oreo it, in the label. Look at that. That is look, full on Oreo. It says Oreo, Ron. Eh, it's got a logo on it. All right, let's see, let's see what happens. All right, all right. Well, I'm gonna okay. pass. I'm gonna pass the little cubes down. And I'm stay very away jealous from my, that I'm not. Right. I'm not there right now. This. Yeah. Okay. A little crunchy. Do you taste the, the Oreo? Got the Oreo crunch. I mean. Oh yeah, there's an Oreo in there. Hold on. Yeah. If I try and talk and do that, like it's it's like creamy chocolate. It's just bad for listeners. Um, that's really good. Wow, that's really I yummy. I don't care if it qualifies. I'm happy you brought this on the yeah, show. Yeah, me today. too. <laughs> me too. That's pretty delicious. Cadbury chocolate is really good. Um, so, can you even get this in the U.S.? Uh, I saw commercials for it. Okay. Well, then for I like a yeah. for like some other. Oh no, that was Milka. No, Milka, Milka okay. is doing yeah. one. Sorry, wrong chocolate company. Wrong Dang. country. Isn't Cadbury like? Isn't Milka like German? Or Swiss. Or Swiss. Or Austrian. Who knows? Or Austrian. Or planet Earth. That's a good good starting point. Yeah. All right. Good. <laughs> so uh, excellent. Thanks for bringing some deliciousness. Mm -hmm. That was short and sweet. Uh, and very sweet, I might add. Uh, but, Victor. Hey, how's it going? It's time hey. for the news. We got Matteo in studio, so I'm expecting a goat selfie. Oh. It's Android oh. news. Oh. Don't set your expectations too high. I that thought would... I thought Victor was gonna go for a rhyme with Matteo. We got Matteo in studio. I didn't know, I didn't know where, and and you went with goats. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, he played it yeah. safe. It's fair. Played it safe. <laughs> Wait, you, you didn't right. bring the ghost puppet? I'm afraid not. His carbon hoof was already too big for this year, so he oh, decided well. to leave leave <laughs> oh, him at home. Carbon hoof. Oh jeez. <laughs> well, Very you nice. know who. You know who didn't play it safe? Who, Ron? Google. Oh. No, it's true. They didn't. They rolled the dice on their announcement last week that occurred the day after All About Android last week um, as we did our predictions. And as Jason, as you mentioned, we had some surprises. But first, let's get the stuff that wasn't a surprise out of the way. The Google Pixel 2 and Pixel 2 XL was announced as we thought. Uh, the cool two-tone colored Pixel 2 XL, which is really wasn't so darn big, would be super tempting. Uh, but the Pixel 2 ended up being a 5-inch FHD AMOLED screen, and and uh, the, the Pixel 2 XL is a 6-inch QHD POLED uh, display uh, running uh, Snapdragon 835s with 4 gig of RAM and 64 or 128 gigs of storage. Uh, Battery life: 2,700 milliamp hours on the on the Pixel 2, or the 30 over 3,500 milliamps on the Pixel XL, Pixel 2 XL, which is the largest battery of a flagship phone, just ahead of the S8 uh, Plus. So uh, put you know put that on your charger and smoke it. Um, <laughs> as many people were upset, no headphone jack. Uh, last year's joke was that it had a headphone jack. This year they just they glossed over that. Um, but they do have the adapter in the box, similar to every other phone that comes without a headphone jack, uh, US, USB, USB-C headphone adapter. Um, a spare one of those is going to cost you $20, so just don't lose it. Oof, that's um, pricey I, for, an, for a little adapter, is. I feel like. I'm wondering if people are going to, if, if like the knockoff brand types will pop up on, um, sure. on Amazon and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. my favorite aspect of the whole thing is the, the little bit of color on the power button. Um, on the two-tone Pixel 2 XL, you got a red power button, but I like that. Uh, I like that mint-colored power button on on the the gray version or whatever color that is. Um, so a little little design touches going on there, which I like. Um, it's also got stereo front-facing speakers, finely water-resistant. Um, they rolled out a now playing feature for song IDs on the lock screen, which is pretty neat. And they announced that Google Lens would be exclusive for now to the Pixel phones, um, as well as the active edge, which triggers the assistant. And unlike the Bixby button, it is not remappable. So if you squeeze your phone, it's going to start the uh, assistant, I think as it should be. 
Um, and they both have single 12 megapixel rear facing cameras uh, with an F stop of 1.8 and OIS. Um, and they rolled out their software based portrait mode on the front facing and the rear facing camera, which is mind blowing on the front facing camera. Uh, we're gonna talk about that more in a little bit. Um, you get three years of security updates guaranteed. And all in all, it's gonna cost you 649 for the Pixel 2 or 849 for the Pixel 2 XL. Well, well. round table. What what do we think? Are, are we are we satisfied with this phone? Flo, how do you feel about this 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 announcement? Well, Ron, I have some unfortunate news for you. Uh -oh. Is that pretty bluish one is a Verizon exclusive. So you can uh -oh. only use that one on Verizon. Um I did not pre-order that one though. I pre-ordered the regular, just one of the regular clearly white pixels. Just the regular the Pixel 2. You didn't go the XL. No, because I because I didn't want to wait. Uh yeah. and because I'm wondering if uh, I'm wondering if I shouldn't switch back to a smaller device. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe it's time I do because I, I have been using this giant XL for so long. And then before that I had the Nexus 6P, which was also giant. Mm -hmm. So I just feel, you know, like- Change is good. I just want to go something smaller Yeah. for a little bit. I'm happy you did that. I ordered the uh, the XL and I couldn't get it in the two-tone because I, I was gone. I was in the mountains. I was With not no service. pre-orderable pre at that particular moment for almost a week. What was that like? Oh, man, that must have been It was really great. Because I was tired yeah. last week. I'm going to tell you. I was <laughs> really tired last week. Uh, it, it's necessary. I feel like it's necessary. <laughs> but coming back is a lot harder because mm -hmm. you're... you're you, are you know so far out of the out of your game um which as a result i couldn't get the panda tone on the xl which is what i probably would have opted for i ended up getting the black anyway so uh so you'll have the regular size pixel probably Clearly to show white, off yes. uh, uh, probably to show off in the studio when it comes out and then i'll have the xl it should be that. shipping around october 18th it says for me nice it says it should ship pretty soon, soon. so i'm just patiently waiting and then pretty soon i get mine we'll talk about it in a little bit uh my free google home mini oh right uh it, yep. they say within four weeks of your device shipping so once yeah, it ships then you'll get your code right um, which is funny because which is funny because then we're going to talk about the google home mini in the, in the hardware block but i ordered my google home mini during the presentation like as soon as the store flipped over the presentation wasn't over yet and i pulled the trigger and got one and then and like literally as i got the confirmation it's like and if you buy a pixel 2 you get a free google home mini i'm like ah oh <laughs> <laughs> could maybe cancel it. And yeah, no, account. but then I was like, I don't really want the Pixel 2 yet. So. Okay, all right, fair yeah, enough. What about you, Mateo? Uh, any of these uh, get your goat? So I I was very, very tempted. Uh, then again, the eye-watering price uh, put me off for a bit. Yeah. And then by the time I had decided the kind of blue, uh, smaller Pixel, the Pixel 2 standard, wasn't available from the Google Store, it's not available from the Carphone Warehouse in the UK, or from the, the partner network. Mm -hmm. So I'll just wait until the 19th of October when it starts shipping in the UK and see if it's available in stores. Hopefully I'll be able to get the Panda 2XL. Yeah. Wait, the blue one is also a carrier exclusive over in... No, it seems to be a Google Store exclusive. Oh. Um, but it's not available to order at the moment. Mm -hmm. So they may have supply issues with that. Um, we'll, we'll Probably see. Probably because I'm assuming it has everything to do with Verizon, quite frankly. Um, to do for the them. UK, probably not, um, because we don't have CDMA I, yeah, networks. Yeah. It's probably just the standards uh, GSM, uh, SKU, and they're just keeping it in limited supply to increase demand. Yeah, exactly, which I'm surprised they didn't make it red. Yeah. I, li I like the color choices, though. I actually thought, even though they were kind of muted, like that... that sort of blue or whatever they well, call it. What are you going to do? You're going to make a bright orange phone for everybody? I, Not everybody's going to wield a bright orange phone even I, though it looks I, cool. I loved, I loved these design things. I, I thought they were, yeah, I mean, Flo, you're right. No one's going to buy a bright orange phone. Maybe. I might. But um, giving a little splash of color, giving a little the two-tone. I mean, now Mateo's the second guest we've had on who's called it the panda, mm -hmm. uh, which I guess I've got to get on board and call it a panda. But I like I, I, I like it more of like a ska, kind of like madness, uh, you know, kind of you know, specials. It's a, the, the specials phone. Um, it's the but, yin-yang uh, design. Yeah, yeah. But it's too I bad like the that. camera like, isn't white, actually, now that yeah. I look at it. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. But um, th these don't – these. 
these at the same time look like phones that you wouldn't be afraid to buy, but they don't look like other phones that are on the market, which is what I want to see out of it. So I was really happy to see that stuff. Um, I thought the the self portrait mode looks really interesting. In fact, we have a, a friend of the show, Marquez Brownlee, posted on Twitter uh, a, a selfie portrait mode. Uh, we could, Victor, we can pull up and show everybody what it looks like. But it, like the fact that that's software base is is really impressive in my mind because the, the other yeah. way other phones do it they do it with the multiple camera lenses and able to do the you know whether it's black and white and color or the or the or the rear cat you know kind of a, a a lens for further for the background and one for the foreground they're doing it all with software which is i think really really impressive yeah and i went i, I zoomed in pretty far into this around the edges like around his head and his ear and his backpacks um backpack his left his left backpack shoulder, if you go really yeah. close into that, you start to see some of the kind of artifacts of the blurring around where it didn't quite catch the edge as perfectly. Um, but, I mean, overall, it did a pretty decent job. It's not perfect, though, and I'll be really curious to see, you know, because, like, I, I feel like with this effect, if it's not perfect, my eyes immediately see that and it's impossible for me to get over it. Really? Yeah, and a lot of what I see coming from the iPhone when it does portrait mode, I don't see those edge, edge effects. And I do on most of the other phones, including, I might add, the Note 8, yeah. which I've been using for the last couple of weeks. I've taken a lot of shots with this in that kind of, um, that I can't remember what they call it, but the portrait mode um, uh, style. The focus, something focus. Yeah, smart focus. Smart focus or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and I mean, there's just, I mean, even though it's a dual camera setup and it's doing that, you still end up with these weird like artifacts or, or this, like, this corner of the image that should be blurry, but it's sharp even though everything else at that depth is blurry and you know so i, I don't know i see that stuff i guess wow. yeah but if anyone can get close to almost the perfect one in software i oh, trust google in doing that absolutely um it sometimes as, as you said it's frustrating taking a what looks like a perfect picture uh, with the background blur effect and then suddenly you realize the space in the mug handle is not out of mm -hmm. right. behind it. Right. Those little things get really annoying. Absolutely. Completely yeah. agree. But for most people, it will be fine to put on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I mean, and this was a this system. was a quick and dirty shot. Yeah. Uh, Marcus yeah. Brownlee explained it in in one of his kind of uh, first look videos. I mean, he just picked up the phone and kind of snapped it just to kind of see how it turned out. And if it did this good in a quick and dirty setting like that. And the fact that it's doing it on a front-facing camera, that's also pretty impressive. We mm -hmm. don't really normally see that. So uh, definitely uh, interested in seeing that. Um, also, do not disturb mode. I just saw this as a total random uh, piece of information about these devices, but that's built in now. So if you use an app to do do not disturb while you're driving, it can automatically do that in settings. It detect when you're driving and silence your phone or whatever, which is going to keep you that's off. That's nice. I feel like there's going to be a bunch of little surprises yeah. like this that we start to see as these come out. But um, but it was funny because I saw a lot of vitriol about the USB-C lack of headphone jack. And I, I find the, the release of this to be very uh, timely as the, the second thing they announced, Flo. What, what, what else did they announce that was, this, that was not leaked? Well, of course, if you're going to buy a Pixel 2, you have to get some buds for them. A little buddy, a little friend, or two little friends that you could put <laughs> into your ear and wear around your neck. Those are the Pixel Buds. They're wireless in-ear headphones with a fast charging case. They use Bluetooth 4.2, even though the Pixel supports Bluetooth 5.0, which by the way, Google made a thing. I mean, they prominently said that during the presentation. Uh, the Buds have five hours listening time, which should be enough for your gym session. Uh, the case holds up to 24 hours of listening time charge. You can tap and hold the right earbud for assistance. Uh, and the buds come in multiple colors. Now, the more interesting part of these buds, though, was the assistant integration and what it can do. So you're not just talking to assistant and, you know, making plans in your Google Calendar or, like, calling people. You can actually use these to actively use Google Translate out in the world, which I thought was the coolest demo that could possibly be shown. I mean, I, I was I was so impressed. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to say. It was really impressive. Uh, it was live translation yeah. from Swedish to English and English to Swedish. Yeah. Okay, apparently in my scramble today, I missed this actual demo. You so did. Yeah, so I did not yeah. see the demo. I just kind of read read about the capability, and that was going to be my question. So I need to find that video and watch that. I can tell you um, about it. 
Uh, yeah, or you can tell me about it right now. Like, were both people wearing their own version of the buds? And, no, so only, uh, I forget their names, but only one of the demoers, demonstrators had the earbuds on. And uh, she was, I believe she was speaking... And his, his, she was speaking Swedish and her phone was translating it in real time, if I recall correctly. And then he was speaking back to her in English and the earbuds were translating in Swedish in her ear. So when she's speaking in her language, it's translating and sending it through the speaker on the phone to the other person to hear? Is that I right? believe so, if I recall correctly. Yes, or they both had buds on. That's yeah. that, yeah. I actually can't remember if they both had buds. Uh, but regardless, it was, I mean, the demo yeah, was kind really of, cool. the demo was kind of hard to hear because they were doing the, they were doing the Swedish to English translation over the loudspeaker in the auditorium. So we couldn't actually hear how accurate, you know, the, the result was or what the phrase was that she was saying. Mm -hmm. But just, I mean, the whole crowd like ooed the minute that they did yeah. it. Like everybody ooed in the audience, which is. <laughs> so I'll admit I was, I was ooing as well because I yeah. thought this was, Ooh. I mean, cause, cause it's one thing, it's one thing to make a, you know, like a Bluetooth headset that kind of kind of that works with the phone or whatnot, but I feel like they, they took it and they took it a step further, right? Everyone has, everyone's talked about how great the AirPods are, even though as I think they look awful, but anyway, um, you know how great the AirPods are because of the instant pairing and you can't do and the sound quality is because of this chip that Apple has and beats and all this kind of stuff. But it, it seems like Google has got technology that rivals that, which is great. I This announcement was so interesting that I had friends who are iOS people asking me, oh, those are really cool. When do they go on sale? I think that's awesome. And has Google Translate? That's so amazing. And then I broke them the news like, yeah. That like not only does that thing that you want only work if you have an Android phone, it only works if you have a Pixel phone. And then they just immediately got deflated, and they were they're like, "Oh, well, that sucks," and they just moved on. Hmm. So, while it's cool, I think the exclusivity thing kind of hurts it. I was under the impression that that ability was going because the Pixel buds are so the, compatible so the, with other so, Android phones. So the, the Pixel the Pixel buds work as Bluetooth headphones on any phone, Android or iOS. Okay then the Pixel Buds with the right version of Android or iOS work with Assistant. Mm -hmm. The Translate function only works on a Pixel or Pixel mm. 2. So, so if you are a UN translator, get you a can Pixel only two. buy the Pixel 2. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely seen some hot takes about like our translators, you know, worried about their jobs because of this, oh, because we of the pixel buds or whatever. But, you know. uh, yeah. Well, maybe maybe I'll be a robot down here. the line, yes, at some point we should be worried. You on the Twit Network. <laughs> I'm pretty positive though that the Google Pixel buds are not about to put translators out of out of a job. No, there's no, it, there's so much nuance in yeah. language. And yeah, there's really still is. a few years to go, but I, I think this is a great thing for travelers. If you yeah. land in yeah, a totally. city like Beijing and you yeah. you don't speak the language, they don't speak the language. If your phone and your buds can help you, it will make everything so much smoother and easier mm -hmm. rather than pointing at pictures on your phone to try and give the idea of what you're looking for. Or, what or feeling you're holding, defeated hold because you can't have a nice conversation with a really nice German couple because you don't because understand, you don't understand, understand their saying. language. Yeah. Well, you can't have a nice conversation with a German. Sorry, I'll stop. <laughs> oh, stop, there, right? stop. Anyway, um... But I will say that less about the, I think the translate thing is great, but more about the form factor of the earbuds. I'm not someone who likes in, we've talked about this before on the show over the years, Jason, I don't know if Flo and or Mateo know this. I do not, because of a in-ear bud mishap on a plane once, I do not like putting things in my ear at all. That's why I use regular earbuds that don't go all the way in. And I was very glad to see that these are of that style that aren't as invasive as other like the 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 you know jam a plug in your ear um, kind of method. So I thought that design was great. I don't love the cord that you got to wear around your neck like that LG one. I was kind of hoping that they would just be kind of free, you know, fr almost like Air free AirPods falling. and the free. Yeah, you know, but I'm not gonna say it. Um, but uh, but I think it's a great first step. I did not order one, but I did uh, join the wait list uh, to be notified when they come back in stock, and then I will order them when they come back in stock. Oh, I think I, they're pretty cool. I just assumed that they were just wait list because when I went there, that's all you could do. Were they actually available for a while? Yeah, they yeah, yeah okay. they sold out. Yeah, they sold out pretty quickly. They're they're for sale for for one hundred forty nine dollars. Yeah. I thought I thought the same thing, Jason. That's why I didn't. 
And then I went and saw that they had sold out and there was a join waitlist one. And if you go if you go to the store and hit join waitlist on all of them, the, all the colors are out of stock. So um, but you can be notified when they do come back in. Well, I mean, I've, I've been very resistant to the ejection of the headphone jack. And with this one, I, ha I apparently I have to accept that that has happened. So I will future. probably be getting these. I'm not yeah. just not convinced, Ron. I, I think the, the, the design is really cool uh, with the pogo yeah. pins for charging and mm. the case itself yeah. mm -hmm. recharges the headphones when they're yeah, not the, in use. The case uh, allows for up to, well, has enough charge for up to 24 hours of listening yeah. with recharges and all that. So, And that, that's a really cool feature. Yeah. Uh, that I think but the nylon like. cord, though. That I, I actually know, it's like. a little janky. It's a little no, janky. I actually I like, like that. I, I, I you haven't like. seen it in person yet, though. No, you're right. I haven't. Have you? No, but, but, uh, but I like actually I tend to like uh, cords that are nylon versus cords that are plasticky and or rubbery. Yeah, and stuff. yeah, that's fair. Uh, well, I believe, they hang they hang a little bit more naturally. I believe I Leo pre-ordered a pair actually. Yeah, I think he did. So we'll see him soon enough. All right, we will. You know what? We'll also see see soon enough because I ordered one of these. Oh, oh, you did. I did. You. you I mean, okay. Twit did. You did it. But I, I went Still. through the process of it. Still. Uh, the Google Pixel Book, as rumored, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, and you guys talked about it last week. Uh, thin and light with a four-in-one design. This is the update, the long-awaited update uh, to its Pixel Chromebook category. Uh, laptop mode, a keyboard underneath for video viewing mode, a tablet mode, and then a tent mode. Uh, you know, four different you can ways. You sleep do you under it. I know exactly. It, it's also a pillow. Uh, dual tone case on the back, like you see there, kind of similar to the Pixel design aesthetic of their other hardware, the Pixel phones. Which I think is worth pointing out, by the way, that there is a. Uh, I, I, a uniform design across the product lineup that was announced last week. Like there's, yep. there's a nice, oh, yeah. everything matches perfectly together. Kind of like, you know, when you go to the Apple store, everything is mm -hmm. nice and white. Like this one, everything is color coordinated, you know, yeah. same materials. Definitely a brand identity. Yes. Um, yes. And a, a kind of a signature across all their hardware. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, arguably it's even more of a color uh, consistency across the product lineup compared to Apple. Because there's still the debate over where's the space gray iPhone mm. 8. Oh, yeah. Because mm -hmm. the new MacBooks have that option. There's no version right. of That's a good the point. Anyway, sorry, to completely nope. interrupted the spec nope. rundown. Not at all. Twenty, uh, sorry, not twenty point three touch uh, touch screen display. It's a twelve point three inch touch screen display. That would be a really big laptop. I'm sure they exist. Uh, <laughs> Intel cool. Core i five or the the top of the line version of this has an i seven processor, eight or 16 gig RAM configurations, 128 all the way up to 512 gig storage configurations, USB-C with fast charge, which I'm really gonna appreciate. Assistant is built in. You can either say OKG, uh, or you can use the assistant key. So, you know, thankfully you don't have to squeeze the frame of the laptop to pull up assistant. That would be weird. Uh, and then prices start at $999, which is lower than what the rumors were saying. The rumors had that at like another $150 or $200 more than that, which would have made it even more expensive, obviously, but more expensive for what you get here. And that seems to be the primary kind of complaint that people have about this category of uh, of Chromebooks, uh, all the way up to sixteen forty nine, and shipping October thirty first. I, I got to be honest. Mm -hmm. I got to be honest with you. That that price point being lower than what was rumored or leaked was impressive. But watching this demo, I. Uh, probably audibly gasped louder than I did for the Pixel Buds when they showed the automatic tethering. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, that yep. was cool. You open up the laptop and it, ta it, it tethers to your phone and get a data connection. Mm -hmm. Like for a moment, I was like, ah, do I need a new laptop? <laughs> like I really like I I am on the fence with this one. I'm I I if I if I was gonna get one, I would really consider it. This is really cool. It's getting there. It's getting there. Yeah, I like it. I'm very also yeah. very curious. I probably won't have a whole lot of use for it, but curious to see what uh, what the Pixelbook Pen, which they also announced mm -hmm. at ninety nine dollars uh, as an added accessory for this, what that actually brings to the experience, and actually like how deep that goes. Well, you into can Chrome circle OS. stuff right. to activate for assistant. assistant. Mm -hmm. um, you can draw. Yeah, how how built out will that be though? Like that that's yeah. kind of the basic kind of built into the hardware sort of use case for the pen. Um, 
but like what kind of app ecosystem is going to build up around the pen? Is it going to be that supported or is it just going to be this handful of apps that you see here, Evernote, Keep, and other icons that it's, I don't recognize? Hmm. I think it's looking better than it would have a couple of years ago. Yeah. With the Chromebook Pixel supporting Android apps, um, Android apps that can also work with Samsung's Notes lineup, mm -hmm. uh, I think this has potentially got, has now has more incentive for developers to support pe pen input on tablet or phone. Uh, therefore, it's it, it's not necessarily a bad move. Yeah. But it, it gives a wider audience to the, to the app developers. No place to dock the pen, though. No place to dock the pen backwards and get it stuck. Well, if you have an ear, you can always stick it behind your ear. That's true. <laughs> Which, I, you know what? I have two. I have two ears. So I could totally do that. <laughs> I forgot about the ear. <laughs> I know. We always forget about the ear. The ear gets such short, short, short. Uh, it does. Ripped. Short shrift. Short, short shrift. shrift. There we go. Short shrift. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I, the Pixel Book, I'm, I think, is interesting. I'm, I'm in the market for a new tablet. Maybe you go, you go overkill. You know, who knows? That's... Yeah. I mean, that's it. And we actually, we continue to get emails. I think we got one that did not make the, the rundown today, of people who are genuinely interested in an Android tablet, but are realizing, you know, like their Nexus Nine just, just fell apart. And they're general. They're realizing there are no options. Like there, there That's are it. very, 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 very few options. Video Shield. That's all you got. Well, you got the yeah. Samsung uh, Tab S. Oh yes, yes, but that's still like five hundred dollars. The Xiaomi the Zen, the Zen pad. The Zen pads are pretty good, aren't they? Or the Zen pad we right. talked about. I remember that email specifically. That the emailer pointed out something that was going on with them, something to do with battery or something like that. I I haven't looked into uh, that myself. Also, but, I mean, no. there are very few options. This is an option. This is just really <laughs> expensive. And to give everyone to give everyone an update, my Nexus Nine. While we were been waiting for it to count down to uh, die because of the lack of security updates and software updates, it actually didn't make it to the end of life moment because the power connector. Now it just doesn't char something's broken in the power connector. It doesn't charge anymore. I can't turn it back on. So I do need a new tablet. Hmm. You can use it to play frisbee. Yeah, that's so, sad. So do the math this way, Ron. If you need a new tablet and you were going to get one anyways, and you were already going to spend sixteen hundred dollars, you were already going to spend like five or six hundred dollars on a tablet, right? Okay, we'll go with what's that. Another so nine hundred. Another yeah, four hundred dollars. Right, yeah. you, you know, and there you go. Uh, maybe in a few months. Okay. We'll <laughs> so. All right. Um, All right. That was easy. Should we do the Should we do an email? Let's sure. Do let's an email. do the email. Okay. Uh, Matteo, maybe you can help me with this person's name. G I U S in Italian. What is that? Gius. I, yes? I'm, ass I'm ass assuming this is short for Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Oh, right. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. So Giuseppe, an Italian in the Netherlands, which is nice. And I said Netherlands like I was from Long Island. So there you go. Um, <laughs> So Giuseppe, an Italian in the Netherlands, says, I patiently waited for the new Pixel so that I could finally replace my battery-troubled Nexus 6P. My first impressions are that the Pixel 2 has way too big bezels. And while the Pixel 2 XL looks nice, I'm not totally convinced it's not, it's not that bezel-less look. My main disappointment, however, wait for it, the lack of the headphone jack. Oh, that, yeah. Dear Ron, I know it's the future. The problem is that we live in the present of Bluetooth nightmares. My morning routine, for example, consisted of listening to TNT, rest in peace, oh, on a Bluetooth speaker before driving to work. In the car, the phone always tried to reconnect to the home speaker, off and out of range. It's easier to unpair and pair back every time. Not to mention the many random disconnections or sudden connections of wrong devices. Sure, Google provides a dongle, but I'm one of the billion people, source statistics.made.up, <laughs> who charges the phone during long sessions of YouTube watching or gaming while using headphones. Sure, Google sells a dongle for that, 50 bucks. Thanks, Google. My 6P is in still great condition. It runs Oreo, it's not that slow. The camera is not pixel good, but good enough. However, the battery is dying and I'm not sure I could live without it for another year. Waiting for the Pixel 3 or XL and a future with Bluetooth just works. Help me, AA. You're my only hope. Should I get the Pixel 2 XL or should I wait for the LG V30 or should I just live with an old battery troubled Nexus 6P for another year? Hey, the good um, news. Sorry, Ron. After you, Flo. Totally jumped in there. I'm sorry. Well, because I was just going to say the good news is the V30 not only has a headphone jack, but it has the hi-fi audio. Mm -hmm. So everything sounds like extra better. Music sounds yep. extra bassy. Which is here's yeah. he, here's my thought though, and that and, that, and if that's the case, if Giuseppe, if you're if you need that headphone jack and you're annoyed by the thing or whatever, having phones move to no headphone jack is going to make Bluetooth and Bluetooth devices get better. 
It's what's going to happen. Yeah. The, 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 the need is going to be there to fix the pairing, to make it more seamless. I want to see these Pixel Buds be as seamless as AirBuds are on, on an iOS device. If that's the case, it's pretty compelling. And if they can extend that, whatever they're, whatever the magic they're doing to other devices, to other manufacturers, you'll, you will, you will, you'll look back and laugh at your loyalty to your headphone jack. <laughs> I remember the days when my headphones just worked all the time. You know, I have an incredible pair of Bose headphones that I absolutely love, and they are Bluetooth only, and I wear them specifically when I go to the gym because they don't slide anywhere, they don't get gross, even though I'm sweating, and they last, battery actually lasts a really long time, so I don't know, I'm, okay. I'm thinking I'm going to be okay, and like okay. the dongle is just for my... My train headphones. Yeah. Because I, I like to use cheap yeah. headphones on the train because, you know, who cares if I lose them? I would yeah. say, obviously, the, the Pixel 2 XL has a lovely screen. If you're not using headphones, it has two front-facing speakers, which the LG V30 yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Um, obviously, I've spent time with the LG V30. I think that is a fantastic device. If you can live with being three months behind when the next version of Android is released... That's and big, maybe yeah. longer, but it is a nicer device from what I see in in. It's really nice in real life use. It is really well built, good good device. So the LG V30 gets my vote, not only for that, it may not have a, as good a main camera as the Pixel 2 XL, but that wide angle lens camera on the LG V30 is something that is. It comes in handy. It, it comes in handy. It really does make a difference. Yeah, it does. Or you could just try and. I don't know. Do do some maintenance to the six P and see if you can. Eat yeah, out but you don't another, need you don't yeah. need to do that six yeah. P for you another don't year. Do that. Don't do yeah. that. I that would. I think that's my only actual advice is whatever you do, it's, don't stick with the the six P for the it's, next year. It's, maybe, it's, maybe you could, but it's you're just nah, gonna be. If, you, if, if you're ready, if you're ready, and you've determined what your requirements are, it sounds like the V thirty is your option. And it sounds like it's time to move on from the 6P. It's, you know, yeah. from if you're having battery issues now, you're definitely going to be having more battery issues in a year. And it will yeah. not be a fun year. Yeah. It is also coming up to winter in the Netherlands. The Nexus winter 6P. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. Okay. Um, and uh, the Nexus 6P was notoriously bad in the cold. Oh, so yes, it was. Close to a quarter battery, it would just switch off in the cold. So get it a parka. Well, uh, 6P, it the P in Nexus 6P stands for parka. Good. Fortunately, so it doesn't that's work how that you way. play Pokemon Go with a parka. <laughs> yes, exactly. oh, geez, here and we a go. Power bank, <laughs> <laughs> or the tracker Pixel, because the tracker is the sponsor of this week's episode of All That Android. Let's take a break, and we'll thank Tracker for sponsoring this episode of the show. Uh, your phone, wallet, and keys—you know that they're plotting against you. They're hiding from you on purpose. They're making your life miserable. They're trying to make you late. You know it. Uh, it's time to make a change in your life and make sure that you aren't so late anymore. Eight years ago, Tracker changed everything when they released their first tracking device, and now they've done it again with the all-new Tracker Pixel. With Tracker Pixel, you'll never worry about losing things again. The Tracker Pixel is the lightest Bluetooth tracking device on the market. You place Tracker Pixel on whatever you tend to lose, be it keys, wallets, your cat maybe, uh, pretty much anything. It's small enough to fit on even your smallest items. When you misplace an item that has a Tracker Pixel attached, use your smartphone and a 90 decibel alert will help you find it in seconds. It's super loud. It even has uh, powerful LED lights so you can find your items in the dark. Uh, you can lose your, if you happen to lose your phone, you just press the button on the tracker pixel and your phone's going to ring even if you left it on silent. You can even locate your item if it's miles away because every tracker user is part of the largest crowd locate network in the world. And tracker's 30 day money back guarantee means you truly have nothing to lose. All you have to do is go to the tracker.com slash AAA. Do that and you'll save 20% off any order. That's T H E T R A C K R dot com slash A A A for twenty percent off. And we thank Tracker for their support of All About Android and the Twit Network. Uh, continuing on the hardware train. Well, we never really ran the hardware bumper. You want to do that just for fun? We'll just do that. 
because we were kind of already talking about hardware. Oh, yeah. And that's a really good bumper. It is. It's a great bumper. It puts me in the right frame of mind. It does. It's really it's, good. It's really good. <laughs> it's so Jeff Kosmicki, good. man. He's great. Yep. Especially when you consider how good the idea of the Google Home Max sounds. Mm. Uh, it's a giant speaker powered by Google. It's like we took the thing you liked about Google Home and we, we made, made it, it larger. And we put no, two just, no, subwoofers in it. You know what this reminded me of? It reminded me of the, that Apple iPod speaker that nobody bought. Yes. Do you remember that? Oh, the hi fi. Yes. Hi fi. Yeah, the hi fi. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that was just a dumb speaker. It didn't have intelligence or, you know, Google Assistant or whatever. But yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. The, the video during the presentation of Diplo was, was a bit much. I absolutely agree, Ron. Uh, but yeah. I also feel like I was really sort of impressed by the idea of the smart sound, which analyzes the room and it sort of tunes the speaker for you um, in the space that you're in. Yeah. Like different equalization yeah. techniques. And I really, I liked that idea. I didn't like Diplo, but I liked the idea of the smart sound analyzing, sort of working wherever I'm moving in the room. Um, is I Diplo think, du dubstep? Here's, here's Diplo the thing. does Di a lot of Justin Bieber stuff. Oh, yeah, oh. Diplo Diplo's a producer and a yeah. remixer and all. It's not so much dubstep, but yeah. But here's here's yeah. my thing about the Diplo video is that if if it was Diplo and his buddies spinning records and like listening to music in like a crappy studio apartment, uh, cool, right? But it was Diplo and his friends in like a ridiculously expensive Hollywood Hills house with the outside, and it was just like. It, it just was very, like, it was not, I did not relate to that use case. Let's just say that. He was using, though, he was showing off, <laughs> he was exhibiting how you can wirelessly pair two Google Home Maxes for better stereo sound. Yeah, so. and you can assign, when you do that, you can assign one to be the left and one to mm -hmm. be the right, so you get that nice stereo separation instead of that single box, which, yeah, sure, yep. is giving you stereo, but... No, this yeah. is real surround but this sound. This is like put it in the corners and thump. Yes, yep. thump with the with the dual four point five inch subwoofers inside. Also, yeah. you can thump along with the year of YouTube Red uh, slash YouTube Music subscription if you're not already a current subscriber. So if that's something that tickles your fancy, well, this will Consider be four hundred dollars. So four hundred dollars. It's pricey. It's pricey. Four hundred dollars. Four hundred. Four hundred. Yeah. And I mean, this competes directly with the Sonos Play Three, uh, which was also just. Um, wait, is that the new one? What is the new one with Am with the Mescala Hilton? There's a new one with that. Oh, does the Play so Three have Mescala? Might actually have uh, the, the, There's a new one that has Mescala. Completely forgot the model. Was on and so it was Sonos. the Sonos same Play Five. In New York, they launched the Sonos. Was it the same Sonos. Day? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyways, that that form factor is kind of what they're targeting here. But even the Sonos version is a hundred dollars less than this. Four hundred dollars is pricey. It's pricey, but they have uh, real value in it. Uh, something that we haven't mentioned yet, this show that they said, I think quite a lot during the Google presentation, machine learning AI, machine learning AI, machine learning <laughs> yep. AI. So this AI speaker, first. This mm -hmm. speaker um, learns from its surroundings. It optimizes the sound output uh, by recognizing how the sound is bouncing around the room. Mm -hmm. So it uses machine learning to do that. That's something that very few other products in the market can do. So I'd say that's that for many people might be worthwhile, especially if they're moving it around the house or they're taking it with them on vacation. I'd love an A-B mode for that, though. I want to know, like, okay, sure, turn your AI on and learn your stuff and then, you know, just tweak my sound. The problem is, like, how do I know how it sound, that it actually sounds different than if it were untuned? Exactly, and so depending it could on just the context. sound really nice uh, on paper, but like I don't know. You Speak are the person sound. who should try this out. I think as a music maker, then, you mm. should you should really You're right. I should try this out. Um, yeah. Maybe you can be DJ Jason. And <laughs> that is my name. You know, the DJ circuit. Hang out on a cool patio somewhere. <laughs> hey, how you doing? Invite fellow my friend kids? Diplo over. Play some tunes for Diplo. <laughs> Be an influencer. And please do let us know if you can turn the Google Home Max up to 11. I'm pretty sure uh, if anyone can, I much. can. Rim uh, shots, Victor. That's Rim pretty much shot. what they did here, though. They took Google Home and they turned it up to 11. That's that's what the Max actually is. 
<laughs> um, and then the, there was the the other thing then, that they did, which is they turned Google they, Home they down dialed, to like what, what they dialed it down to a three. <laughs> yeah, it's like a three. It might even be a negative one if you consider Google Home to be zero. Zero. How yeah. does that work? Anyways, uh, Google Home Mini. And we we kind of knew a lot about this prior to the actual announcement. Smaller hockey pack, hockey hockey puck, hockey, hockey pack. pack, hockey pack. <laughs> <laughs> I like that oh, word. That was uh, great. Form factor. It's the size of a donut, apparently. Uh, the trade-off uh, for that lesser cost is a less desirable speaker. So you've got the maximum speaker, and then you've got the minimum speaker here. And micro USB. Uh oh my oh I missed that. Yeah, apparently the, the tweet storms abound. This is connecting via micro USB and not USB Type C. I think people are just like offended when it's micro USB now. I'm so offended. Why would you do that? I'm like migrating over to a new standard. Anyway, go on. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> hey, you got to make cuts somehow to to reach your forty nine dollar impulse buy price point. Um. All of the functionality is there otherwise, you know, aside from the the smaller form factor and the micro USB thing. Uh, soft fabric, three colors, meant to blend in the into the home, they say. So it's kind of got that low profile. It can really mix into things depending on the fabric color that you choose. You can pre-order a new Pixel device. And as we mentioned earlier, a Google Home Mini will be tacked on as a free bonus later. It doesn't, it's not part of the order process, but they say they will Sorry, contact you Sorry, you have to wait till later. You'll get your Mini later. Nah. I might not but, even get the coral one I want. Uh, Forty nine dollars total impulse buy territory, right? Uh, yep. I pulled the trigger during the presentation. I got the coral one. Uh, I got my confirmation. I'm just waiting for it to ship. So, yep. Nice. Um, it well, can be I, the, a gateway gateway product to the whole Google Assistant ecosystem mm -hmm. for some consumers who have never used an Android phone, for example, absolutely. iOS users. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Forty nine dollars is inexpensive enough. Like there, there's plenty of people who maybe have not gotten into this type of technology that wouldn't miss a nicer speaker. You well, know? that's what that the dot like, does right. for a lot of people. Yeah. They buy the dots for you know their maybe their technophobic parents or. Or if, or if you have a house well, that's filled with this stuff, you pick the rooms that where it's important yes. to have really nice sound yes. and you fill yep. those as you as you will. And then you take the rest of the rooms and you fill them with these cheap ones. Well, this is, yeah, this is what this is what we've seen. I mean, my sister got my nieces, you know, uh, Echo Dots and they have them in their bedrooms and their Echo is downstairs in the kitchen and they, they use it as the speakerphone and all that sort of stuff and, you know, the, to, to talk and to leverage all the stuff that Amazon offers. And the way I see that this is the, you know, I'm going to put this Coral Google Home Mini in our bedroom and I've got the Google Home here in the living room and now the house is wired and we can we don't need to yell at Google Home to turn the lights off. Uh, so it will be nice. I, I'm, it's estimated delivery October 20th for me to get the Google Home Mini. So we'll hmm. see if it comes by then. We're going to have some new toys at the end of this month. Yeah, I love, I love this time of year. Can, me too. It's yeah. great. It's like Christmas. So, <laughs> Can well, you imagine how the product development of this happened? So Rick Osterloh went to Sundar Pichai and said, Honey, I've shrunk the Google Home and I've blown it up at the same time. <laughs> Did you just make a Rick Moranis joke? I did. Yes. You did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Only Matteo can make a Rick Moranis joke on all about Android. And uh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you got one so, laugh. You got one wow. That's great, that's thank you. Good. I, I'd <laughs> see that as a success. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Ron, go for it. So yeah, so the last little bit of surprise, and we're saying you know some things didn't get leaked or whatnot. Uh, the Google Clips camera was announced. <sighs> Uh, which is a standalone Wi-Fi connected camera that takes pictures and video automatically using machine learning called Moment IQ. Uh, it can recognize expressions, lighting, framing, action, and capture automatically. And it gets smarter over time, taking pictures and videos of the people you're with the most and highlighting them afterwards, giving you the best moments from that photo sesh. Um, they're all stored and processed locally. Nothing is sent to the web, so you don't need the internet for this. Of course, if you do have a Pixel phone and do have Google Photos, of course it's made that much better. Um, but the, the Clips camera itself comes with 16 gig of storage, three hours of capture battery charge, some cool colors, that mint color once again, a white with black speckles, I believe. Um, the video on the site itself is just is was something to be. If you go on the learn page, Victor, off of this page that you're on now, uh, you can see the video that's on it. Uh, and 
watching it in action, the idea, you know, like, oh, you're cooking with your kids, just set up the camera and it will video and take pictures of the whole thing and you'll see what goes great. Um, crazy town. It's compatible with Pixels and the Samsung Galaxy S7 and S8, which is interesting. It's going to be selling for $249. It is not uh, available yet. It's available. You can get on the wait list or get notified when it becomes available to order one. I showed this product and this video to my girlfriend before the show and uh, sh to say she freaked out was, was an understatement. Uh, is that positive the, or negative yeah. freak out? In a negative way. Oh, okay. In a in a oh my god, just take a picture. Like it's not like why do we need machine learning to 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 tell you when the right moment to take a picture is and all this stuff like that. It was a very luddite esque response that was completely freaked out by the moment IQ aspect of it. The idea that you just set up the camera and it's always watching and taking pictures and telling you when the good moments are uh, kind of freaked her out. That said, I think the form factor of this camera is adorable and I would consider getting one. Do you know how and she many? Just, and she just and she just yelled no. So <laughs> no. <laughs> but do you know how many mothers there are out there who have no pictures of them from various Christmases over the years because they were yep. the ones taking all, taking all the, the pictures, pictures and nobody took a picture of mom. Dad, yeah. that was my just dad. Just thinking not, about just, all those moms out there. It's not a mom thing. It's a parent thing. It's a one Victor just said it's him. He's the it's picture true. taker at home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But does yeah. this not remind you of a product we discussed on All About Android a few years ago? I believe it was with Gina, the HTC Re. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. what, that's what uh, Leo that's and I said. Right? Yeah. 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 So this it seems to be the philosophical successor to the HTC Re. The next but it Re. doesn't shoot audio. True. Which the HTC Re did, and it did live streaming. Now, wait a minute. So this doesn't capture audio? No. This is doesn't capture audio, well, it and it's all yeah. locally stored. Well, I, I understand that it's locally stored, and that's good from a privacy perspective. But it does take video, but no audio. That's weird. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm wondering. Like, would it do video without audio? That's what I. Like, am. Where, yeah, look, looking at it, where's a microphone? I don't see a microphone on it. Maybe it's just maybe it's just silent video. Which then, like, what's the point of that? Uh, it must. I'm pretty it sure must. it has no audio. That's like. No, I don't see. I don't see a microphone on it. Doesn't mention anything about that. Must tech specs. Here we go. Tech specs. Burke says does not record audio. It's on spec page. Yeah, I missed that. Well, Google Photos will add some music, background music. Yeah, that's true. true. For you anyway. And Bleak says they said so. No audio. Uh, no audio. The, yeah. Wow. That is interesting. Why? Why leave that out? Hands get worried. I dream stuff sometimes. <laughs> that's why I'm like, you we have to Google it. But yeah, no audio. Well, well your Google Home will be recording the audio for you. That's crazy. It's supposed to be. Yeah. It's supposed yeah. to not make you feel nice. weird. It's supposed to. That's not a feature coming soon. <laughs> now you can sync the audio we already have in the cloud from your Google Home with the video you've shot on Google. That would Clips. be amazing, by the way. That would be great. <laughs> I love. I love. How, I love how Flo says it's supposed to make you not feel weird, and yet the exact emotion that was elicited from someone who I showed it to was that it made her feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I mean, let's let's. Be real. This is this is not a mainstream product here. This no. is an experimental. No, this is an test experimental. If you want to pay two hundred two fifty, I believe, right? Yeah, I mean, and it's not like in, inexpensive necessarily. I mean, it's hard to price this because you don't normally buy products of this category. This is a relatively uh, different. It thing. doesn't continuously do video either. So this is this is so for it's snaps. just little clips. It's clips yeah. exactly. It's, well. it's, oh my god! I'm surprised they don't save them as gifts. Uh, well, yeah, don't well, they? they're going to I mean, in the assistant. The assistant's going to go, oh, I made you a GIF. Here it is. Would yeah. you like to save it? And it's the whole point is to get you to use Google Photos more. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. I, I'll tell you, man, I'm on the wait list for this. I'll order the hell out of it. Why I'm, not? I'm curious. Cool. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, yeah, it definitely seems like an experimental sort of thing. Uh, I don't know. I, I get I get the other side of it, though. I, I understand the 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 fact that. You know, usually if I'm taking pictures, I'm not in them and I'm not one to always like with every single picture, point the camera at me and make sure I'm in every single picture either. I'll just take pictures of, of my family or whatever and, and move on yeah. and maybe sometime I'll get pictures taken of me. Great, whatever. Uh, but I could see the, the benefit of like you're having a birthday party, let's say, and set that up and let it do its thing. As long as the other people that are at the birthday party aren't weirded out about that. There is a light on it so they, that everyone knows when it's recording. Okay. That's good. So we look forward to seeing Twitter, uh, 
Ron's Twitter feed full of animated GIFs yes. at some point in the future. There it future. is. This is going to happen. <laughs> Precisely. Not likely. All right. All that, right. That was that was the announcement uh, list of hardware. Anyways, I'm sure we missed some stuff, but I think that was the important stuff. Mm -hmm. Did yeah. we mention machine learning and AI? Uh, a couple of times. <laughs> I think maybe with every single product. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just part of what Google's doing right now. We've that's, ticked that's that off the checklist. A high priority, and the fact that they're doing it more and more on device. I think that's more yeah. of a more of a trend yeah. that we're going to start seeing because. Uh, that that allows you to do some really interesting things. Like clips m wouldn't be nearly as palatable, I don't think, if this was all being sent to the cloud. If it was being sent up to the cloud and processing it there, sending random moments of your life that it decides to send up there, like once you know that it's all happening on device, that makes it a little bit more palatable. Mm -hmm. And it's only doing that because it, it, it has the, the hardware capable of doing this artificial intelligence analysis yep. uh, on device. And that, that makes it a successful device probably for that maybe. perspective. Maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. All right, you got an email. So let's, yeah, we got an email. So this is from Tom Walker. Tom writes, uh, hearing that Florence's husband had great success replacing his faulty 6P battery, I bought an aftermarket battery off eBay for $13. Huawei support does not sell them, but I but will install a replacement for $170. So far, I've had Ooh. great results except for one thing. If the battery level's around 60 or below and I take a picture with the HDR turned on, the phone dies and will power back on only if I plug it in. It comes back at the same charge as when it died and works as works fine as long as I don't take HDR photos. Using flash works fine too. It's just the processing power of HDR that kills the phone. Dang. Battery life is fantastic and all our apps work great. I don't know if this was an issue with the old battery because I had just inherited the phone from my son. Uh, so, and he rarely took photos on the 6P, so he can't really tell me if he had the same issue. I'm curious if Florence had witnessed the same issue on her husband's 6P either before or after he replaced the battery or if other AAA listeners have seen this issue on their 6Ps. Actually, my husband is here in the audience. It's today. true. Uh, no, he's not here. Oh, wait, uh, he never mind. He's not here. He's, he's not totally here. not here right now. Um, <laughs> but I just sent this email to him. I sent it. I told him about this email this afternoon and... It's probably just a faulty battery. I don't know. It's I did just some a faulty battery. I did some searching on this, and uh, and I saw a decent amount of forums, like really of of people who even when they replace their battery, like they were complaining about this prior to replacing, and then their advice was, well, replace your battery, and then that'll solve the problem. And they did that, and they still had it happening, and there was no real resolution. It's a total bummer because it's a real pita to open up the six P and right. put a battery inside. It's right. and especially not if you user buy one. Friendly. I mean, thirteen bucks isn't that much. I guess you know, chalk it up to an experience, but. Um, yeah, I don't know if there is really a solution for this other than replace the 6P with something else. I, I think I this hate is, to have that be the only solution. This is not exclusive to the Nexus 6P. So yeah. the Huawei P9 and P9 Plus had similar issues. Oh. There's a the Huawei thing. I'm not sure, but it's something to do with the draw of power, the step up in draw of power for when you're using something like HDR, uh, HDR or your opening a particularly intensive app that fires up all eight cores of the octa-core processor, that's when the battery just says, okay, I can't do anything else, and it, the whole system just shuts down. <laughs> I don't know what to do. So well, it's that's not, what humans do when we it, freak it out. Sounds, <laughs> it sounds, it sounds like issues people were having uh, when, for example, playing an audiobook or yeah. a podcast and playing Pokemon Go and going into a gym. The moment you went into the gym, that's when it just went. Because it was just that's it. all that animation and all that. Yeah, that sounds like it. Which well, is a, a bummer that it's tied to HDR because if you have the 6P, that's how you, you need get your HDR. good photos. You need <laughs> yeah. HDR. That's how the good no photos pixel, happen. honey. <laughs> right. So I don't know Jeez. what to tell you on that. Um, Sorry, Tom. Yeah. You could try and go through the painstaking process of replacing the battery one more time. <laughs> uh, oh, something tells like me. This is a Huawei, a known yeah. Huawei issue that exists across the spectrum of devices. I mean, yeah. I mean, we're seeing some speculation in chat wondering if the battery, Uncle Bick says, you know, that battery is probably of a low quality and can't just yeah. charge the juice that is needed for the power required. That could be, but he, you know, he did point out in his email, I had to cut it down a little bit, but he did point out that Huawei um, doesn't sell specifically its yeah. like OEM battery for this device. Like he had to buy third party um, for this. But hey, Huawei will do it for $170 maybe. And then you'd have their involvement. Uh, 
Or is there a better phone for $170? I bet you we'll talk about that in the next mm-hmm. segment. We might do that. Or you can ask yourself, how many USB Type-C to 3.5 millimeter audio jacks can you buy for $160? I think that's an important question for you to ask yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Ron, take us, uh, take us uh, to the break. Yes, uh, we're going to take a quick break and talk about our friends over at WordPress and thank them for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. And listen, we know that building something new, if you want to build something for that other people will connect with, it's a lot easier with the right tools. That's why we're so excited to have WordPress.com as a sponsor. We use WordPress.com every day. And let me tell you, whether you're looking to create a personal blog, a business site, or both, creating your website, website on WordPress.com helps others find you, remember you, and connect with you. And listen... I'm not lying when I tell you I use WordPress.com every day. WordPress is a key part of my life. It has been for years. And when they say you don't need experience, when you don't need to hire hire someone, that's totally the truth because I've been able to do it, and that shows you how easy it is. And thankfully, I've been able to do it because WordPress.com guides you through the entire process. They have hundreds of beautiful designs to choose from. Whenever I roll a new site and set up a new site, I literally lose hours scrolling through the different templates and designs and things like that because I can't I can't decide. They're, they're all so great. Um, and when you use WordPress.com, you'll get a built-in search engine optimization and social sharing in your website. It's all there. You don't need to worry about plugging the you know getting the right things. All the all the various plugins and stuff you need are all accessible to you and easy to install and easy to use. Uh, in fact, their business plan lets you access hundreds of plugins and themes. And when you choose a WordPress.com plan, you'll join a lively community where you'll have access to expert and friendly support. Over 20, 28% of all websites run on WordPress, which is amazing. It astounds me every time I say it. Uh, it's the web's most popular and most powerful site building platform. Find out why by giving it a try. Get started today with 15% off any new plan purchase. You can go to wordpress.com slash allaboutandroid to create your website and find the plan that's right for you. That's wordpress.com slash allaboutandroid for 15% off your brand new website. And we thank WordPress for their support, sponsoring this episode, and helping us make awesome websites to connect with awesome users. Thank you, WordPress. Thank you, WordPress. WordPress.com slash allaboutandroid. All right. It is that time. I hear we might have something special in the cooker for Mateo's Hardware Shack. Goat curry? Oh. (laughs) Oh, wow, look at that. That's awesome. (laughs) Wow. That's awesome. Victor whipped that together earlier today and surprised me with it. That's awesome, man. Well done, Victor. Well done. I love this. We need, okay, not not to put too much pressure on you, Victor, but we need a new hardware shack bumper for every guest that we have. No, just kidding. That's a lot. Just a tail. What's funny is that Flo doesn't even have a hardware shack bumper that we use on a regular basis. We had that first one, but that was kind of a, a moment. It was kind of like, hey, didn't Bleak do that one in the chat room? That yep. was great. We should yep. get our hands on that one. I'm I want hardware shacks. Right. Yeah, the, yeah, the Caddyshack theme. Yep. Uh, it was very good. Right on. All right, Mateo, you have not one, not two, but three things to throw off, show off today. What's, uh, what's the first one? Yes, let's start off with a device that's been out for a while. Um, in a way, is a trendsetter in the Chinese market and one that heavily inspires other products that then come to market after that. So this is the Xiaomi Mi 6. It's Xiaomi's flagship product for 2017. Mm-hmm. It's been out for a few months now, uh, but the hardware is very, very pretty. It's two parts of glass. I just noticed it is that. really nice. It's curved glass that. with curved edges at the back. It has a dual camera. It's this dual camera with dual flash is the similar setup to the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. So it's a color RGB sensor and a telephoto RGB sensor. So it has similar behavior to what you'd see maybe in a fruity iPhone uh, <laughs> 7S Plus or 8 um, or the, the, the Note 8. It has a very good front-facing camera, and for a 5.15-inch device with full HD resolution, it has relatively small bezels, and it's a lovely device to use. Now, the the real bargain you're getting with this phone for about £350 or $400, depending on which site you import it from, is it has 6 gigabytes of RAM and a Snapdragon 835 chipset, so oh, wow. exactly the same internal specifications as the Note 8. It's USB Type-C for charging, and Xiaomi have very courageously decided not to put a 3.5 millimeter audio jack in it. Oh, so courageous. But it does have (laughs) an infrared blaster. 
Oh, so you can, so you can control ah, like the TV that. with it. Yep. You can be sitting in a hotel lobby or an airport lounge and decide that you want to change channel and go and head, go ahead and do that with this. It's also water and dust uh, splash wow. resistant. It's not fully waterproof, but it will take the odd splash and handle that. And so this is a very, very nice device. Xiaomi's uh, Android distribution, MIUI, has uh, matured very, very nicely. It's arguably very iOS-like. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have uh, an app drawer in its native launcher, but it's very well thought out, very polished operating system. And the home button is also your ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. Ultrasonic? What does yeah. that mean? It means they're essentially running low-level vibrations across the glass of the button, <laughs> which makes it much faster and more accurate. Okay. Uh, the And below the screen, on the right, you have a back button, and on the left, you have a task switcher. We are mentioning this uh, when we are speaking about the Xiaomi A1 Android 1 device that has that configuration of buttons under the screen. That's something Xiaomi does pretty much how Samsung did until not long ago before it gave users the option to change that with on-screen buttons from the Samsung S8 onwards. So you're getting a lot of smartphone with a very, very capable chipset and a 3,350 milliamp hour battery for about $400. So this is Xiaomi's flagship. 400. You're getting a lot of phone and a very oh. nice phone. For this that. phone feels really nice, I have to say. It looks like a little yeah. note little note or a little galaxy a little and, note. and all those little curves little i mean note. yeah well yeah kind of, not like a little note maybe. no but i i see what you mean kind of like kind of the, it's with the that curved back yeah it's very hip so it's a style. it's a fingerprint uh magnet Aren't they all they especially all are especially now. if it's glass back which you know i saw some some groans in the chat room about glass back because if it's glass back I think that's just a, there's a durability aspect to it that it looks really nice. It feels really nice. You just better be dang sure that you're, you know, <laughs> you're treating it right. Otherwise, I, I does it ever do the the slide across the table? And yes, it does on both bang? sides. So front and back. Yeah. This table's pretty even or flat. It seems like. Well, but, that's good. <laughs> but I would say I, I take yeah, it as a, no as safe a, way to set this down. Apparently I take that fragility as a positive thing. It's an excuse to buy more market dial kit. Cases. Of course you do. Do you know if it supports any US bands? It does support uh, 3G on AT&T and T-Mobile. Uh, it does not support 4G bands from either of those operators. Wah, wah, wah. So sadly, if you're in the US, there's not much use in getting one if you want to use 4G. So um, very nice device. Uh, if you're traveling internationally, it might be better value for you. But in Europe, it works on most networks. Mm. In Asia, it works on most networks. For $400, it's a very, very good device. Mm -hmm. As I said, the Snapdragon 835, we all know how great it is from the S8s and the LG yeah. E30. With a 1080p screen, it's very power efficient too. So I get more than a day's battery life out of that small 5-inch phone, which is a challenge to most phones in that category. It'll be interesting to see how the Pixel 2 with the same screen resolution, much smaller battery performs in battery life compared to the Xiaomi Mi 6. Hmm. <laughs> yes. It's a really nice phone. It's it's a very well built, uh, shiny device. I, I was I was super stoked when I saw that you had this, just because I mean, I I had ordered the Xiaomi. Was it the Mi 3 or the Mi 4? Quite a few years ago. And that's really the only like flagship Xiaomi phone that I've had spent any considerable amount of time with. But for its time, it was actually very impressive. Uh, but this always looked really nice online. It's just another thing to see it in person. It feels really nice. Yeah. Very nice phone. And obviously this is, uh, as I said, the Xiaomi devices are trendsetters in the Chinese market. Yep. Their MIUI or MIUI uh, Android distribution is an inspiration for most other Chinese OEMs and ODMs with how they approach software development. And, for example, Huawei's MUI or MUI, uh, that is heavily inspired by, by what Xiaomi does. Uh, so speaking of MUI, uh, this yes. is the Honor 9. Flo, you've already shown this device mm -hmm. off. Was it a blue one? Yep. Yep. Pretty so blue they, one. they call this a, a light catcher because it has a shiny blue back. Yeah, I like, I like that. It has a dual camera on the back. 
Uh, this one does have a courage port or a 3.5 millimeter, <laughs> <laughs> millimeter audio jack at the bottom. <laughs> well done, well done. Oh, the courage port, I love it. And it does have an infrared blaster. So this is You're something that seems a, a, to be a standard in the high end Chinese devices infrared blaster for TVs, uh, stereos, blinds, air conditioning, whatever you, <laughs> you, you enjoy. And I must say, this uses the same camera as the Huawei P10. So one of the sensors is color, the other is black and white. It gives you the facility to do optical zoom or something close to it through it. And if you have a mini tripod, the night mode on the Huawei devices is, is amazing. They're what so is, good. What is the night mode? So the night mode is essentially the same as what you do with the tripods and a professional camera. Long, the, long the after exposure. Really long, long exposure. exposure. Got it. So I keep a small tripod in my backpack because oh, sometimes oh, at man. night you can take those 25 second exposures in at night with ripples of water reflections it really does a, a fantastic job with with in those situations wow nice so the honor 9 and the huawei p10 if we look at them side by side you can see they're very close in terms of design hmm. features screen size i mean hmm. it's identical size. frame size is identical hmm. Look at so, all those cameras. Those yeah. So I'd say this is what this year's Chinese flagships look like. The Huawei P10 is obviously very, very similar. Mm -hmm. I would expect in the coming months, the next generation to be 18 to 9 aspect ratio screens. They have to catch up to competitors like LG and Samsung and others with the different aspect ratio. Are they going to be dropping the bezels in the same way? Who knows? They're going to be racing to yeah. do that. You the, know that's somewhere down the line. I yeah. don't know if that's next year, but it's at least a couple of years. It'll be interesting to see how that works because yeah. LG doesn't kill the bezels that much. They don't make them as curved. There is a, a real practical advantage to not doing that. The usability of the screen, not only uh, on Android devices, but even on iOS, if you're developing for web or for apps, is pretty much the same because you need to exclude the, the, the actual bezels the touchable screen yeah. parts from mm. your 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 app, so it's it will be interesting to see how Huawei and Xiaomi, and Oppo, Vivo, and others decide to take on the eighteen to nine aspect ratio flagship race next year. Um, and then moving on, I've brought the real star of tonight's show. I've been hearing about this phone. Yes, so this is a <laughs> Duji device. Um, it's not a shiny flagship. It's a device in the $150 price range. It's a 5.5 inch full HD screen. Here we go. And we're going to do this live on All About Android. I'm going to take the screen protector off. This is Whoa. the factory, factory <gasps> oh, device. That's my, that's my favorite moment in any yeah. of these. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. So like you know it's really... Opening a banana. It's yeah. really <laughs> or a Christmas present. <laughs> Do we have a banana for scale? <laughs> no, oh, I don't shoot. Have no, we don't have a banana for scale. That's a shame. Yeah. So it's a 5.5 inch device with a MediaTek chipset. This particular one has four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage. This one is expandable with micro, micro SD. The front facing camera is supported by a front facing flash, which isn't uh, entirely new, but it's an extra feature nice to have, yeah. for your, taking your self, selfies in the dark. It's dual Respect your selfie. Yeah. Indeed. Um, or as Victor mentioned, taking selfies with goats. That may be the real reason I'm in Petaluma. Mm. <laughs> um, on the back, we have a... <laughs> Jeez. Now I understand. It all makes so oh. much sense. Mateo, you're not helping yourself at all. <laughs> it's fine. I've got no street cred to lose. lose. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so on the back, we have a dual camera with a dual LED flash um, and a lovely pleather back, which is built onto the phone. It is. It is. So I'll hand this over to pleather. Flo so that she can get a feel for the device. It's pleather? How heavy is that? Oh my gosh. It's a brick. If I threw this at someone, it would hurt them. You know, it oh. actually reminds oh. me of the V20. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. The V10. The V10? The V10. But six of them in terms of weight. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the feeling tape, of, tape of the back. Together, right? and... <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, it is relatively show, yeah. thick, but the, the reason for the thickness and the weight is that it has a 7,000 milliamp hour battery built into it. 
So for a bit of context, that's close to double the battery size of a Samsung mm -hmm. S8. And with a low-power MediaTek chipset and a relatively big casing, which means the antennas are a bit more free, it means that you get three to five days normal use out of that battery. So for media playing, audio, audible audiobooks and content, it's very, very good. Uh, Doogee have done a very light touch job on the Android distribution they're running on that. It has secure Android security that updates up to July, I believe, on uh, Android Nougat. So you're getting a lot of value for your $150. Uh, maybe the only downside is to it is that it has micro USB for charging. But if your accessories, your car chargers and everything are already micro USB, maybe that's not a bad thing. Suck it up <laughs> for so 150 bucks. Um, maybe a few questions about their marketing and their copyright on their website. <laughs> Be long time, belong to you. Be long time, belong to you. Yes. I don't even know what that means. It's very philosophical. I'm, I'm sure <laughs> Baidu right. translates Be perpetual. Me, belong me. to yourself. <sighs> oh, boy. Um, now, okay, <laughs> when... Uh, when <laughs> so take a look at the back of the Note 8. Let's do the obvious, obvious comparison and compare the Samsung Galaxy <laughs> Note yeah. 8 to the Doogee BL7000. Or $900 more. Um what what is the difference between a hor and actually I I realize I'm I'm throwing this question at you without knowing whether you can answer it or not. What is the difference between a horizontal dual camera array and a vertical camera array? Like, can they do different things, or does it throw off like any of the kind of like bokeh? I don't think there's okay. that much of a difference. Um, okay. As long as they're two different points and they're a certain distance for each other from each Doesn't other, matter. they should do, do the same thing. You notice that even with other devices such as the iPhones, the iPhone X or iPhone 10, which one mm -hmm. are we mentioning? That has a, a vertical alignment of the two sensors, whereas okay. the, the other ones have a horizontal one. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, maybe unless you're doing a wider angle shot, yeah. if you're doing that in software. But um, for a $150 phone, the camera is pretty good. It takes reasonable mm. pictures. It has bouquet effect. It has panorama effect. Um, it, it's it's okay. Uh, nothing to complain about. Okay, you got a little bit of. Well, I so don't know if this. That's was... a bouquet effect, and on my desk back in Edinburgh, kind of of soft drink. I was about to say Sprite Zero. <laughs> Do we have Sprite Zero? I don't know. I don't know. We might. Uh, I, I have noticed that as I've been playing around with it, I've had to hit the home button like a couple of times to yeah. make it work. It's not as responsive as, say, the Xiaomi Mi 6 or yeah. the Honor 9, but it is a for $450 phone. It's good, and it's also got a fingerprint scanner that not many other devices mm -hmm. okay. have in that price range. Wow. All right. Before we move on, yeah. while we're on the Doji phone, uh, Mateo, can I make a request? Sure. Uh, Victor, in the chat room, I put a link uh, of a Doji phone that I would like Mateo to get his hands on and tell us about. Is this uh, the, the 10,000 milliamp power battery one? The, no, no, I don't think so. It's the it's the five it's the 5,000 milliamp one. It's the Doji S60. The tagline is flagship rugged. <laughs> and uh, have you seen this phone? Yes, I did. So we saw the pre-production devices at MWC this year. Yeah. And they were demonstrating this in tubs of water, boxes of sand. <laughs> and of course. after the event, I managed to get sand all over myself. Uh, I don't know how. <laughs> and I still have sand coming out of my suitcase to this day. Oh, my gosh. So the phone is resistant, the phone but is, you are not. You're not. So <laughs> beware of using that phone. It has lots of <laughs> nooks and crannies where sand and dust get stuck. Uh, in those demo situations, it's dangerous. But uh, from what we, we used it at MWC as a pre-production device, it was very good. Uh, comparing it to an S8 Active, which was re recently launched, I have no idea how it will perform. But again, for $150, you can't complain about too much. This is opening up uh, maybe having a smartphone to some people who do outdoor sports in places where it rains a lot, like Scotland, I love it. for example. Uh, but yes, Doji uh, have a product range where they seem to be aiming to solve some problems for consumers and go all in on solving one particular prob problem per 
device. So the rugged device is for people who are outdoorsy or do, do work in particular conditions. The BL7000 is for people who like having good battery life. And the Doogee Mix and Mix 2 uh, are for people who want to look good. <laughs> That's awesome. The style the category. Sti yes. look good. Yeah. The status category. Which which one is the 10,000 10, milliamp? The X10? So um, I don't know if I have it here. Let me no, that's 3,000. So they, they have I, a 10,000 milliamp hour uh, model, which is even yeah. thicker and heavier. The, I think my next phone is going to be a Doji. I like these. <sighs> these so, are weird. <laughs> they are. So there, there's a bit of controversy over the, and the, the Android distributions they have on their devices. So they are very, very different from one device to the other. And there's also maybe some questionable practices in the analytics tools that are Ooh. built into the operating oh, system. Ah, one. one of those. One of those. Um, have we mentioned that, uh, the OnePlus? The OnePlus? No, we don't. We haven't mentioned it. <laughs> so yes, um, in the last few, <laughs> I heard about it, but I don't really know a whole lot of the details. But if you, I'm sure you probably know more about it. So it's still early days, but yeah. um, at the moment there's a large brouhaha about OnePlus building their own analytics tool into their devices and that they're operating not on Wi-Fi, only over cellular, and they're sending personally identifiable information and events from the use of the device uh, back to home base. It is being sent back to OnePlus domains. Uh, it is information that's personally identifiable, and there's reproducible steps on how to, to see this. Uh, I would assume that this is because when you set up your phone, you agree to share your information with OnePlus mm. to improve the experience and so on. Uh, but there's no mention of how granular right. and how identifiable this information and is. I usually uncheck that no matter what. Just because yeah. that always, that always, I mean, for exactly what you're talking about, that always seems like an open-ended ticket. <laughs> like, you know, share your information about how you use this device. What information? How I use this device? A million different ways. And I don't want you to necessarily have that traveling all over the internet for this very reason. But there you go. But that's a normal practice. That's is, another way for the OEMs, ODMs, uh, to be able to offer you a $150 device they can do that because they're monetizing their users through the use of these analytics tools. So I'd say it's a, it's a trade-off. Uh, you need to be aware of that and maybe read those terms and conditions before ticking the accept box. Uh, but there's still early days to make judgment on OnePlus. Uh, we'll need to see a bit more deeper in investigation, some double checks on the original article that was posted. Right and see yeah. how, how that goes. I'm sure they're going to have some sort of a comment at, one, at one, some point um, to but, kind of address what's going on there. But we're hearing more and more about this sort of thing. Yeah. I feel like, Ron, is it time to reset the timer on OnePlus? I think so. I think that's valid. It's been a while. We might as well. Yeah, might as well. Let's let's reset the counter. Okay. It's been, we'll I don't know how many days it's been, <laughs> but yeah, it does. Yeah, so. All right, good. Uh Oh. Happy we did that. <laughs> all right. It's time to move from hardware. By the way, thank you. Thanks thank for you. showing all that thank off. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for the amazing bumper, Victor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Victor loves you. He, yeah. he thinks you're awesome. And it's so awesome, in fact, that he made you a bumper. Um, and we expect more of that, Victor. No, I'm just kidding. You're, you're a busy guy. We really <laughs> appreciate that you did that. Uh, without further uh, talking about other things that aren't app-related, let's talk about things that are app-related in the arena. <laughs> so many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. I completely flubbed last week's arena. It's okay, it happens. It really happened. It yeah. happened live. It's okay. <laughs> hey, we've all been While there. You were well, gone. actually, I've been there. You've been there. Ron, have you ever been there? I'm sure I've been there. I'm, I'm sure. sure Ron's yeah. been there. <laughs> It's, well, hey. actually, we, should we should we take this opportunity, Jason? I know it's we have it later in the show, but should we do it now before we go in? Uh, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so we we do want to give a huge, huge thanks to Tony, aka A underscore Gizmo, and Tribble, both the usernames. I don't think that's Tribble's real name, uh, but they're the guys who have been updating the uh, all about Android apps wiki 
um, and the work that goes not only into the apps wiki and saying what apps have been gone into the arena on a week by week basis, but they've also been maintaining a stats page, which is my new favorite thing on the internet. I always forget it exists. And then I'm like, oh my God, this is great. Um, and it's keeping track of all the wins that we've had, our current scoring schema. Um, it's no small task. Uh, you can go find this all out. You can go to twit.to slash Android apps. Uh, to go see the Android Apps Arena to see if uh, the, the Arena Wiki to see what apps have been in the arena. Or you can go That's to twit.to twit.to slash arena stats to see all the all about Android win stats. And Victor, those links are down at the bottom of the, the page. Maybe we could show the viewers that are watching right now. But um, it's a massive, massive endeavor to keep this stuff updated. And we ebb and flow in terms of uh, their updates stuff because, you know, stuff happens like having a baby, which, which is uh, – uh, a big deal, and we want to congratulate uh, yeah. congratulate him for that. So uh, a a underscore Gizmo has a, has a new child, so his uh, ability to update the wiki has been a little harder. But uh, we want to thank them for the hard work they do for that and keeping it updated because that allows us to catch people like Flo red-handed in the arena Jeez. with a dupe app. <laughs> yeah, red-handed. Well, take, it, it, take a look at this. Look at this. The 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 win stats for the arena. It sh this is as of last week, so showing that you know Florence, me, and the guests are all tied, and it shows all the 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 different first, second, third, and fourth place wins. Like so, Flo might not win this year, but so far she's got the least amount of last places, which is really something that's impressive, right? So oh, uh, I think the the, st the stats of all these wins are great. My other favorite stat is if you scroll down to previous seasons or years, um, they kept track of our streaks. Yep. Like for example, oh if gosh. you go to if you yeah if you go to 2014, the year that I won, my longest streak was five wins in a row, episodes 166 through 170. Which Jason, do you remember that that yep. um, over a month when I won every week? Right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> you were on fire. I remember that. This is great. This is good stuff. <laughs> Stats. I love it. So, yeah. yeah. So thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tribble. You guys are awesome. So. Yeah, pretty That's awesome it. stuff. Um, yeah. and they they do a lot of hard work, and we realized we realized in the past week. We, we never like point people to this awesome, valuable resource. We've covered so many apps on this show over how many years now? Uh, seven years? Six yeah. years. Six years. Over six years. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I, yeah. It's just crazy how many apps we've had. And they're all logged there. Uh, thanks to the folks who have helped out on the wiki, um, yep. these two included. So thank you for doing that. And we will uh, begin. We, we're going to start kind of throwing you guys that link at the end of the show so that you always know to check there because there's a lot of really great stuff there. Um, yeah. And, and and to that point, like I we, we thank Wade County because he's here live in the chat room doing the absolutely. show. Absolutely. Tony and Tribble are doing the work in between shows. And so we want to thank them. They're awesome. You guys rock. So there you go. <laughs> and then Wade County is the one that comes into the chat room and says, here's the standing so that we know what to yep. read. Uh, it really helps us out. And that's going to happen right now, right? Uh, Bit.ly yeah. slash AAA underscore 337 was last week's link. Uh, I was, I was of course, out. What were the, what, what do we have the standings here? I need to pull this up. What do we have as the standings? Let's see here. Network speed. That was mine. Monitoring. Was monitoring. 39%. Best oh, yeah. I'm sorry. There was a there was a typo because I had to scramble and do the poll again because oh, somebody because brought a, a dupe app into the, yeah. Thanks, Flo. <laughs> <laughs> Network speed monitoring, uh, 39%. Best hashtags for Instagram. Hey, that was my, I just pulled your, it out your of alternate. my nose. <laughs> hey, you got second out of that. Nice. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. 25%. Brick Blast Ball, which I have to check out because that sounded really cool. 21%. And then Sky Gamblers Air Supremacy at 15%. <laughs> uh, so I'm in second so place. So that said, that gives us a stats update, thanks to Wade County in the chat room, through 40 weeks of the All-Ban Android arena. Uh, I take my rightful position back oh, in first geez. place with that first place win with 107 points. Flo is in second with 105. The guests are in third with 104. And Jason, you miss a week. You, you, you fall deep into the basement. You got 95 points, my friend. It happens. So, it happens. Yeah, it's going to take at least two weeks to catch back up. So. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's the price you pay for going off the grid for a week. Yep. I'm, okay, I'm okay with that price. Hey, I'm going to I'm going to be gone in two weeks. I won't be on the show in two weeks, so I'm going to I'm I'm going to drop back down. So there it, it, it is. all balances so. out over time. Yep. Uh, anything can happen. That's one thing that the arena teaches us week in and week out. Okay, my app is a voice recorder app called Parrot. 
And there are a lot, you know, voice recorder apps, I feel like is, is one of those categories where there's just tons of stuff that you can find. So then it becomes, it's like you're overwhelmed with choice, finding the ones that are actually any good, um, designed well. You know, sometimes I like to, I like to locate those apps that are design, designed well and open source. So I feel a little bit more comfortable from a security standpoint that people, you know, have visibility into the app. Parrot Voice Recorder is that. It's free and it's open source, although there are paid uh, there are paid versions of this app to get into the pro version. The free version is super capable. You can see it's a really clean design. Um, I can go ahead and tap the microphone and it's recording. And one thing I really like about this, because I'm an audio nerd, I really like waveforms and I really like <laughs> live updated waveforms. It just makes me feel happy to not see that it's clipping and, you know, which you, you would see because it would be this like straight line up at the top. Everything looks healthy in the, in the audio uh, quality that you're seeing on the, on the waveform. That just makes me happy. I could pause it and then start recording later and it would be a seamless recording or hit stop. That saves the, the file out. Um, and you know, you can determine obviously prior to this, what quality you want to record it at. I happen to be recording it at an uncompressed wave 44, one, uh, Hertz. Um, and then, you know, give it a name, save it and boom, you've got some options on the post save, uh, to, to throw in there, but we don't need to get into that. Here's where you down here can select what the quality of your recording is. Obviously, if you go lower quality, like MP4 at 8,000 Hertz, uh, 16 kilobits per second, you're going to take up less disk space, uh, less drive space on your device. So if you have, if you're recording like lectures or multiple hours of stuff, you probably want to throw it on low quality, depending on how much storage you have in here, uh, or ultra high quality. If you're say at a concert or whatever you want to do, uh, some extra features like skip silence, you can turn that on. It will detect, uh, at a certain point, uh, a threat. You basically, you set a sound threshold and if no sound is coming in through that threshold during a set amount of time. It will pause recording until it hears something that passes that threshold and then starts recording again. So, you know, maybe you have that recording while you're working and as you have ideas, you speak them out. And when you speak them out, it starts to record those ideas and then it stops automatically and those get compiled, compiled and condensed into a shorter amount of time. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Uh, and then it has automatic gain as well if you want to kind of even out the levels of the audio that you're recording and not make it so jumpy between the really loud stuff and the really quiet stuff. Um, here's where all of your recordings are cataloged. It also has this share area where you can tap that and share directly to your cloud storage, let's say, or pretty much anywhere, as you can see here. If you do pay for Pro which uh, starts at $1.49 on a monthly subscription or it's it's 20 bucks for like a, an unrestricted, you know, that's it. You get access to everything forever, which is a little pricey, but they have all different payment levels within there. Uh, you get some extra features. It does have phone call recording capability in here and you can set that up to record automatically. Be aware of your local laws on this because this, <laughs> yes. you don't want to get yourself into trouble recording phone calls to someone that doesn't know that you're recording their phone call. But if it's really important, you know, a lot of people tend to use options like this when they're calling customer service and they want to, you know, the customer service is recording you. You can let them know that you're recording them as well. That's a way to kind of catalog and, and track your interaction with them, and that's saved people uh, in their interactions with customer service. That's just one example. And you have all these features to kind of tweak around that, which source that recording comes from, all the different ways that you can record, you know, whether uh, the, those audio streams of the caller and the microphone get merged and all that kind of stuff. You also get with the pro version scheduled recording. So if you have a certain time of day or week where you always want it to record automatically for you, your device is set up in a place, you want to set it up. Maybe you want to repurpose an old device to be, a, you know, a, just like a scheduled recorder for something in your life. You can add a scheduled recording and set all that up and tell it which mic it's using in order to do that to get the best sound out of it and all that kind of stuff. It just runs automatically. And then finally, backup. And this I really love out of voice recorders. If I can do some sort of easy backup to the cloud, that's what I'm going to want because a lot of times you record all these audio um audio files to your phone. And at least for me, I switch phones a lot because of what I do. If I forget to move those audio files out of that random folder on my, on my storage space here, 
um, and then I, you know, factory reset my phone, those files are gone. So having some sort of way to easily send all of them to one of my cloud storage drives um, and you, you just connect it, you set it, you forget it, and you can do it as you go. So it's really easy. Anyways, it's called Parrot Voice Recorder. It's a really, I think it's a really great uh, voice recorder app. There are a lot of so-so ones. This one's really good, and you should check it out, Parrot Voice Recorder. All right. Um, so, Flo, you were second place, but I think that means you go next, right? Because I was out sure, last why week. Not? So, all right. It does. Why not? So I, uh, you know, you just in your life, you have social media and you have certain people that just really rely on that social media, but you don't like the way that social media sort of just takes over your phone uh, and, you know, all of its uh, memory abilities. So Facebook introduced Messenger Lite this week. Ba -da -da. Messenger Lite this week, which... <laughs> Which is hard to show off. It's really hard to show because I have all of my messages well, we could just show there. there. Um, it, it might be a here. I'll show you this. I'll show you the screen. <laughs> uh, anyway, Messenger Lite is basically it's a really light version of Facebook. Um, it's just messaging. You can use the stickers as you like. You can do uh, group chats. You can send photos, videos, links as you normally would on Messenger. You can make voice calls over Wi-Fi if you need to. Uh, you can you can do those very simple things. You don't have to worry about the video chat. You don't have to worry about all the games that load in the background. You don't have to worry about the incredible bloat of the app. All you have is the chat functionality and the voice call functionality so that the phone is installed on your device, but it's barely taking up any room. This only, uh, this only weighs, this is only a 10 megabyte app, which is very small. And I've been looking for ways to get through on Facebook. Mateo just sent me a lovely little message right now, as we can see over the shoulder. Here we go. Oh, we have a they? picture that he just sent me. Uh, and all of this is through Messenger Lite. So this is for everybody who needs to have Facebook Messenger on their phone, but they don't want the full Messenger app. They just want something light, easy, that they can still use to communicate with people without any, without any complications. Nice. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot, like Facebook's doing this with their apps. Um, Google's done this with a number of their apps. Uh, is there a Twitter light at this? No, I don't think there yes, is Yes, there is. is. There's there? a mob, There's a um, a progressive web app, right? There's a yes. PWA okay. uh, of Twitter. It's a Twitter light, and it works through the browser. But this one is an app. So if you don't want to deal with the, the quote-unquote hack of using Facebook Messenger through the browser, right. this is a much better, uh, much better in-between and I think a, a lot of times they're being created for markets where storage is at a premium, low cost Absolutely. devices with limited storage. But it ends up that being the case that, I mean, that these apps work just as well on devices that do have a lot and might actually um, kind of tackle some of the issues that people have with social apps, you know, requiring a little too much of their information, their data, or whatever, you know, the space. We could all use Well, uh, you can still sign up for this with just space. your phone number if you like. So yeah. if you want to receive your text messages through it, you can. Um, right. But it's Messenger Lite, and it's free, and it's from Facebook. Right on. It, it's also a very good way for Facebook to avoid losing customers who have only used Messenger very a few true. times and can't yep. justify the 40, 50 megabytes mm. of bloat on their phone. Rather than seeing them uninstall it, they'd prefer to have everyone with Messenger Lite on their phone. It's it even works point. on an unstable internet connection and with Android phones, uh, gingerbread or higher. So if you've got a really old phone, well, I fear for your life, but you can use this app. <laughs> There's so many HTC desires still out in the wild. It's true. Still desirable. Apparently, yes. Apparently. <laughs> Those AMOLED screens are lovely. <laughs> All right, that is Messenger Lite. Mateo, what you got? Okay, so my app this week, um, I'll have to give a quick disclosure on this, is an app called Trip.com. Now, this is a partner of the business I work for, Skyscanner. Mm -hmm. We provide Trip.com with APIs for their search for travel. So Trip.com is an app and a website uh, with a service for travelers. 
And I'm going to go through the setup of Trip.com on uh, the Doogee BL7000 just to give you an idea of how the product works and what the advantages are. So the idea is turn that the brightness this... brightness just a tiny bit down. Sorry. Down. Sorry. Okay, well, turn yeah. the brightness down. Tiny bit down. There we go. There we go. Okay, we so the there. idea is that this becomes your discovery and inspiration engine for travel. You use Trip.com to not only discover new places, get ref recommendations from people similar to you, but then also share your reviews and uh, share your experiences. Um, you have to have location uh, services enabled. Obviously, it wants to know where you are to give you good recommendations. And funnily enough, I've just logged in and I'm in Petaluma and it's suggesting <laughs> Wild Goat Bistro for mm. me. Um, let's see if I can turn this brightness down that's a, little a bright bit more. screen on it that is, doogie. and it doesn't doesn't go so I'm that's kidding that's the it's wild like maximum goat. battery maximum minimum brightness, brightness. <laughs> or very little throttle on the brightness yeah, maybe that's uh, it. so yes so this is me in petaluma if you want to you can log in using google or facebook i'm going to use google in this instance it will say which account would you like to do it from there we go and so it's now suggesting locations based on my tribes. The idea is that when you're setting up your app, you choose which tribes you're part of. A tribe is a group of a, a personal habit for travel. So are you a business traveler? Are you a budget traveler? Are you a backpack traveler? Are you a solo female traveler? Mm -hmm. Are you an LGBT? Q traveler, mm -hmm. all these different types of travelers maybe are interested in different types of uh, venues to visit, whether it's a restaurant, bar, club, hotel, uh, cafe. So this is a chance for users to be able to give recommendation to like-minded people. And so, for example, here I'm interested in the Wild Goat Bistro. Of course um, if I have been there, I can review it. Did you go? Have you eaten? I haven't been there yet. But what it shows you is within the tribes, who is this bar popular with? So it's popular with foodies. It's fo popular with green travelers, travelers who want to have as little Im impact on the environment as possible. Adventure seekers, wellness seekers. And it gives you a profile of the venue, map and uh, contact details if you want to book up, opening hours and reviews from like-minded travelers according to which tribe you're in. So this is a good way to start off with your travel. You can also uh, explore by map. So if you're in this part of town and you're not particularly interested in that, you can open up the map and it gives you other similar places that are open. So if I want to go to Cattleman's Steakhouse or Lombardi's Barbecue Deli, they're all recommended in the app. They have reviews. It's a sort of way of finding local venues to go through. You can also look at your activity. So I've been using this app in Napa and Sonoma Valley for the last few days. I've reached level two and Silicon Valley in the peninsula. I've reached level two there as well. They've gamified it. You get points for doing reviews. You go up levels. You get more trusted the more you use the app. Mm. And once you become a local or a pro, um, you get a little badge. So you, there are certain gateways to be getting there, but you become more trusted as a local if you have that uh, that tag. Right. And then there can be a leaderboard with your friends or the other people who are in the area. So as far uh, as, far as the base app of features is are concerned, that's it. The more you use it, the more useful it is to you. So the more you like a certain type of place, the algorithms understand that, They'll recommend that based on your tribe preferences and your travel uh, travel habits. And within this app, you also have the facility to search for uh, travel using Skyscanner's API. That's a, a great uh, feature. So once you become inspired, you can search for and find your travel arrangements from there. And I think this is a competitor to apps such as Swarm from Foursquare even with Google Maps. But it's a very well-built app for Android. It's relatively light, and it makes great, great use of material design. Also, the color scheme is great. Now, the listeners who have been watching All About Android for a few episodes may know this app. Uh, it previously was branded as GoGoBot. 
Uh, we're aware of this bringing the app into the arena. Googlebot was brought into the arena in episode 165. So I think 173 episodes is a good space of time to June, bring in that. June 10th, yeah, that's 2014, yeah. So that, that enough time has passed that enough work mm-hmm. to the app has been done. We, we've, we've covered this before, right? Whereas this, if, if, mm-hmm. if it's materially different. That was the new, that was the new rule yep. for 2017. Yeah, this, the, this was originally shown off when Amazon showed off its Fire Phone. Cool. Yep. <laughs> if that puts things into perspective. And the Moto hey, E was a new thing. Puts things into perspective. And I, I find this a great app for discovering new places. It's got a great feed of... Uh, featured uh, reviews and locations, very nice photography, very cool pictures of food, which is something that inspires me to travel, and a reason I come back to Petaluma quite a lot, not just for goats. There's a lot of there's a lot of good goat eating to be had. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that was the barbecue place. <laughs> I mean, I think you need to check out Wild Goat Bistros. I, I think yeah, that sound, sounds like a great great thing. If yeah. not this trip, next time I'm in Petaluma, that I will definitely right. visit. We'll make it happen. Uh, right on. That's trip dot com. Uh, good looking app. Uh, right. Trip dot com city and travel guide. Look for that. You'll find it. All right, Ron, you are up. I cool. have it installed. I Last think I got to the, the intro so stuff. I got, a, I got a little story for us to tell. You know, so a, a lot of my app, oh, I don't know what my hair is doing these days. Um, a lot of my apps recently have been very kind of meaty, data driven or productivity or, you know, or, or like last week was the network speed kind of dry, kind of boring. I wanted to mix it up and have a little fun. Um, so I brought a game to the arena this week. Uh, we've talked a lot about games and Jason, I think you and I bonded on the fact that the majority of my gaming love comes from the games of the early to mid 1990s. Um, one of those games and, uh, Victor, I have the Wikipedia page of one of my all time favorite games ever. Um, a game called lemmings, uh, which we can, we can show if we want to click that link and we can, for those you youngins in the audience, you millennials might not remember lemmings, but lemmings was a game that debuted on the Amiga platform and then was ported to the PC and things like that. And basically it was all these little guys that walked and did whatever you told them to do. And the goal was to get them from where they got dropped until where they ended. There we um, go. Yes. There we go. So there you go. Oh, so, I love uh, that game. Yeah. So lemmings was great. Basically the idea was that's a very small graphic, but the idea was these little, these little blue guys just walked and they kept on walking and you can make one of them a digger. You can make one yeah. of them a bomb. You can make one of them stop them. And the idea was to get them from point A to point B. Um, it really kind of, you know, this is 1991. It really drove a lot of the uh, the kind of character movement and stuff like that. Like it inspired World of War, inspired some of the Warcraft developers and things like that. And I would even say that this kind of game inspired Angry Birds and a lot of the mobile games that we learned. So I've been looking for Lemmings for years or a replacement of Lemmings. Um, I think I finally found it. Some folks have ported Lemmings in the past and that never has really worked very well and it's kind of buggy. But I found this game called Sticklings which clearly is steeped in the lore of Lemmings and that it's the same idea and that you've got these little stick figure guys and they get dropped out of a box. Uh, there we go. This, this is the little demo. The idea is you got to, you got to, they get dropped out of a cardboard box and then you've got to walk them into this little kind of teleporter pit at the end of it. So in this particular case, it's real easy. There's nothing <laughs> I'm gonna you can win. do. They just, they just drop in the hole. Exactly. Oh, I've and got this see, one. You can see in the box how many stick figures will come out of it, and then also in the little hole you can see what um, how many how many more you need to get. Um, it gets a little harder as the levels progress, and then you get different kind of tools that can be used to move them around, different abilities. So in this particular case, they're going to drop out of the they're going to drop out of the cardboard box and start walking to the right. And what you need to do is you need to turn one of the stick figures into a blocker. And so when they walk to the right, they hit him and bounce to the left, and then they end up in the hole, and then you move on to the next level. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, it's pretty neat. It's good. It's intuitive. It's a very similar interface to the original Lemmings. Um, some of the puzzles are really difficult as you move. I, I think I got up to level nine. I, like, I, I sailed through, like, the first five levels because they're very introductory in this, in, like, like in this uh, demo that Jason's showing. Um, but when you get around to level nine, then they get pretty difficult. Um, you have... Uh, sticklings that can jump. You can have ones that run fast. You have ones that build a staircase. You have ones that uh, count down uh, and blow up after five seconds. 
Um, and so it gets fun and, and not only gets creative is that there's not just one way to solve the puzzle. Usually there's one path to solve the puzzle. Like in this case, you need to blow one up to blow a hole in the top level and then they'll drop down to the bottom level. But there are different ways that you can do that. There, you know, the, the explosion can happen in a different spot. Maybe you need a blocker somewhere else. Maybe you want to use a staircase in another way. Um, so it's pretty neat in that it's not the, it's like some of these, a lot of these mobile games, there's just one way to win. And I like the games that allow you to be a little creative and how and how you're able to win. So there you go. It's called Sticklings. A um, lot of fun. Um, I dig it. I've been having fun with it on the subway. So there you go. It's free huh. in the Google Play Store. So. Uh, I apparently did that wrong, or maybe not. No, you're doing. You're, you're all right. You're gonna make it. Oh, okay. There you go. Ah, yeah. Gotcha. There you go. You've, you built. You built. You built a staircase, and they they walk up the staircase and drop off right into the hole. Good job. Nice. So. I figured that yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, right on. Excellent. So sticklings, free in the Google Play Store. Play the game I've been playing. Um, there you go. Excellent. Sticklings. That's it. Uh, so you can place your vote for your favorite episode uh, for your favorite app from today's episode. Twit.to slash triple A poll three three eight. Twit.to slash AAA poll three three eight. Vote for either Parrot Voice Recorder, Messenger Light, Trip dot com or sticklings. Place your vote and we'll check in on it next week. Victor is hovering. Victor likes likes a voice recorder. Victor likes wavelengths. Wow. I think Victor's yes. got it in for me between not clicking the link and then not voting for my game. Wow. But by the way, uh, to, to, uh, to our good friends, uh, A. Gizmo and Tribble, who track the stats, is this the first arena that Mr. Mateo did not bring a goat-themed app? <gasps> it could be. I think not. So I did bring Health 2 app, which was a uh, lifestyle uh, yoga recipe. That's app. right, you did. Yeah. You also but, brought Sky Scanner, a very, very yeah. early. One. In fact, maybe even the episode that GoGoBot was shown off on, if I remember correctly. Like, yes. Strange. Many, many. But you've had, ago. you've had. Yeah. I would like to see the stats on Mateo's goat apps and their performance versus his <laughs> non-goat apps and their performance. And Flo agrees with me. I, I wholeheartedly agree. But <laughs> this is purely serendipitously uh, I did have a goat vet related venue in trip.com and I did have a goat related salad in health 2 app <laughs> so I'm managing to okay, we're, gonna, we're keeping the goat theme <laughs> right. going it keeps going I'm surprised it, it wasn't goating. I, I'm, it keeps going very good uh, I'm surprised it wasn't cats floating through space to be honest well, we, we all know the internet's all about cats anyway, so there's no point in it's promoting true. them any further. But I do have a GOAT <laughs> user story sticker on my laptop. And what's the and user story behind that? Um, as a as a internet user, I want to hear more GOAT user stories. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, well, so, uh, so then how can people reach you if they have GOAT user stories to share with you for your independent study? They can share those user stories with me on uh, Twitter at Tudoleo or uh Follow me on, on coolsmartphone.com. Right on. Excellent. And you have a podcast? Cool yes, Smartphone Cool Smartphone Pod. Podcast. It's nowhere near as polished as all about Android or any of the Twit TV shows. Doesn't have to be. It's awesome people talking about technology. <laughs> we're, we're all very passionate about mobile technology. Not necessarily only mobile, Chromebooks, right. digital assistants, but it's good fun. Right on. Mateo, always fun getting you on. Thank and you. Uh, it sounds like you're going to be out again in December. It's always room at the be. table for you. Thank but you for Whether in a screen or at the table. Thank Let you. Let us know. Um, Flo, what, what's going on in your world? What's new with Flo? Uh, not much that I can <laughs> link to yet. Oh, so just okay. follow me on Twitter at oh that Flow for now. And on Snapchat at oh that Flow. I'm on Instagram too. I'm on the internet. I really need to update my website. So maybe don't visit it for a little bit. I really need to update it. I promise I'll get to that this week. <laughs> uh, you're busy. No, I am busy. I have been working, just so everybody knows I am working. <laughs> I like Ron, what about you? <laughs> um, so I'm going to uh, skip my usual uh, promos and plugs. You can follow me at RonXO uh, on Twitter or go to ifanboy.com. Uh, but I'm going to plug this nifty T-shirt that I'm wearing that oh. I got by becoming a member of the EFF. And I also got an awesome uh, sticker that you can put on your laptop to fight dystopia, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Go to EFF.org and help uh, donate there, become a member. They're an awesome organization. And if you like podcasts, they've been fighting 
uh, the EFF, uh, the the patent troll that is trying to take ownership of the podcasting spec, and basically they it's almost dead thanks to the work of the EFF. So give them your support, like I did. EFF.org. Yeah, they so pretty much defeated that, right? At this point. Yeah, they did. The, 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 there's a question as to whether or not the people the, the people who were making the claim are going to appeal and possibly try to drive it to the Supreme Court or not. Right. But as of right now, the judgment it was not in their favor, which is awesome and thanks and much and thanks to the work of the EFF. And I know yeah. that we're in tumultuous times and there are lots of organizations that need your help. Southern Poverty Law, Planned Parenthood, where you know, pick one. Um, ACLU, et cetera, et cetera. But EFF is one that uh, I think directly is helping us as content creators and people who work on the internet. So uh, definitely, if you can throw some uh, money their way, they could they they could use the support, and you get cool stuff. So yeah, there you no go. Kidding. It's a nice T-shirt. Yeah. Uh, cool. Thanks, Ron. Uh, and big thanks to Victor for all your hard work on the episode. Thank you, and and the bumper. The Good bumper job, Victor. Was, the bumper no was awesome. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> Let it be known that I feel terrible for forgetting to say goodbye to Victor on last week's show. I just wanted to bring, wanted to bring that up. To yeah, yeah. I, I walked in after my break and that's the first thing Victor told me is that I know he was really, I know I'm sorry, Victor. It's all right. <laughs> but all, all I want to say is on the win stats, um, this is for you, Ron. I think we should yep. add a goats above replacement stat. <laughs> So I don't know what it takes to co to code a wiki like that. I don't want to give them more work. I'd just be happy with a little or something. Uh, that's a, can, that's a good point. Can I also point out? Um, there's obviously in the chat room people mentioning we haven't spoken about Alcatel. So I heard this great joke: if Alcatel were doing a music focused uh, phone for the goats demographic, oh, no. what would they call it? Uh, oh, I don't want to know. Dot, dot dot. I don't know. What the Billy Idol? Uh, oh, the Billy Idol four. I like it. Please wrap the show up. Please. <laughs> I want more, more, more. <laughs> Bezels. Uh, you can find me at JasonHowell.net, YellowGoldMusic.com. But that is really it for this week, folks. Great episode. Had a lot of fun. We'll be back next week, of course. Voicemail, 347-SHOW-AAA. Email and video mail at AAA at twit.tv. Find us on Twitter. We are at Android Show. On Reddit, twitaaa.reddit.com. Every app from every episode listed at twit.to slash Android apps and stats for the arena at twit.to slash arena stats. Show notes of past episodes, twit.tv slash AAA. That's probably the most important one because that gives you access to everything that we talk about. And you can find us everywhere you find podcasts, Pocket Cast, YouTube, iTunes, wherever you get your, pod your podcasts, you're going to find us. And uh, find us live every Tuesday starting at 5 p.m. Pacific at twit.tv slash live. That is it for this week. Have a great week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Bye, everybody.